in this lecture we are going to learn about how proteins are sorted to their final destination so in mammalian cells you will see proteins can be synthesized either on free ribosomes or on membrane bound ribosomes so proteins those are synthesized on free ribosomes either remain in the cytosol or they can be transported to nucleus mitochondria chloroplast or peroxisomes in contrast proteins synthesized on membrane bound ribosomes are translocated into the er lumen first or they can be translocated into the membrane and later on either they can stay in the er or they can be transported to lysosomes plasma membrane or secreted out of the cell or to the golgi apparatus so together er golgi plasma membrane and lysosomes make endomembrane system so the focus will be how proteins are trafficked within the endomembrane system so there are two steps to it first going from cytosol to endoplasmic reticulum and that transport is known as transmembrane transport second thing is starting from endoplasmic reticulum how can they go to either golgi or to cell exterior using secretory vesicles or lysosomes and this transport is known as vesicular transport because the transport happens the proteins are transported via vesicles so first we are going to learn about how proteins get into the er from cytosol so here you will see on the ribosomes when messenger rna is being translated and protein is emerging out this protein has a signal sequence which is a stretch of amino acids it's it's a specific stretch which is recognized by srp signal recognition particle and it binds to it so once it's bound to srp srp escorts the complex to er membrane so this is your er membrane so the complex of srp with the protein in the ribosomes they attach to er membrane then srp is released and the ribosome bind to the membrane translocation complex known as this is translocon so srp binds to srp receptor which is bound to the translocon and the translocon opens and this protein starts going into er lumen so this is the complex translocon complex and here is your protein getting into the er lumen and this signal sequence is cleaved by signal peptidase so you will see this red part of the protein is cleaved by signal peptidase and protein is being released into er lumen so this is the process how a protein that belongs to end of endomembrane system gets from ribosomes located in cytosol to the er lumen so the next part is how 
do proteins, those are membrane proteins, get inserted into ER membrane. So initial steps are the same. So you will see how here is the signal sequence that will bind to SRP, will get located, will be um, translocated to ER membrane, and then it will start getting into the ER lumen. And you will see here is the signal peptidase that cleaves the signal sequence right here. So once the protein starts getting into ER lumen, so right here, so you will see this is the hydrophilic portion of the protein. And then there is this portion of the protein, stop transfer sequence, which is hydrophobic in nature. So because this is a stretch of hydrophobic amino acids, once the translocon closes, this is released into ER membrane and never gets into the ER lumen. And then the protein synthesis keep happening and the hydrophilic portion, the second hydrophilic portion stays into the cytosol. So this is how membrane proteins spanning the membrane only once are inserted into ER membrane. But some proteins are span the membrane multiple times. So how does that happen? So same, initial steps are the same. You will see here is SRC receptor. Here is the signal sequence. They form a complex, bind to this translocon. Signal sequence is right there. Here is your stop, start, stop transfer signal, which is hydrophobic. Here is another hydrophobic stretch. So the, whatever stretch is hydrophobic will remain in the membrane. Hydrophilic will be either in the ER lumen or in the cytosol. Here is the second stretch. And then the hydrophilic portion stays here and it keeps going. This is the third stretch. This is the fourth stretch. If it was, a, if, if the membrane was going to have multiple hydrophobic uh, stretches. So this is how, this is an example of how proteins with multiple membrane spans get inserted into ER membrane. It's just the stretches of amino acid which are hydrophobic and then followed by hydrophilic stretches. So you will see a protein inserted into ER membrane. So once the proteins are either in membrane or in ER lumen, they can be glycosylated in ER. It means a sugar moiety can be added to the protein. So this picture illustrates an example of N-linked glycosylation. So here is your protein which has asparagine as the amino acid. And here is a lipid dolicol that carries this sugar molecule. This is the oligosaccharide. So this is the ER membrane lipid. So this transfers this, mem this oligosaccharide portion onto the asparagine. So here you will see this is covalently linked and dolicol phosphate is released back into the membrane lipid. And it's done using an en a specific enzyme. So once this is transferred, this has, you can count, three glucose, nine mannose, and two N-acetyl glucosamine. So in total, 14 sugar units. So once it's transferred onto the protein, then there is some modification. You can see here, so three glucose residues are removed by the enzyme, and then one mannose is removed. And glycosylation is also important for protein folding. Once the protein is being released into the membrane or into the ER lumen, then this acts as a signal for certain proteins to help proper protein folding. So 
the question is how is this long oligosaccharide synthesized so here you will see this is dolichol phosphate which is a lipid of er membrane which is synthesized in er so it's a stepwise synthesis so this is er lumen site and this is cytosolic site so first n acetyl glucosamine is added and then second n acetyl glucosamine is added and udp acts as a carrier for them then one by one five mannose sugars are added once it has these two n acetyl glucosamine and five mannose the lipid is flipped using flipase enzyme so you will see now the oligosaccharide faces the er lumen after that four more mannose are added and then three glucose are added so now you will see there are two n acetyl glucosamine nine mannose and three glucose and this dolichol phosphate carrying this oligosaccharide with 14 sugar is ready and then it transfers it to a protein and that's how glycosylated proteins are generated.